welcome to the channel and my complete achievement and trophy walkthrough guide for Zombieland Double Tap Road Trip. Now I've actually only completed this on Xbox, however the guide that I'm doing here will work for PlayStation 4 trophies because they are the same between formats. So first up I thought I'd start with the Gotta Love the Classics achievement and this one involves killing four zombies with one shotgun blast, it's worth 20g. Now, in order to get this, it's actually really easy. It's just a matter of getting a shotgun out of one of the weapon crates in the game. Basically, you have these green weapon crates scattered around the game where you get a random weapon. The minute you get a shotgun, just let a group of five or six zombies build up if you have to run around the map so you get a few of them chasing you and then turn around and very close quarters fire the shotgun into them you're pretty much guaranteed to get four kills instantly I got this achievement immediately upon playing the first level purely because I was lucky enough to get a shotgun out of the first crate but real easy achievement this don't waste time just trying to get this achievement it will come to you very easily during playthrough next up is what's that a triple tap so this one involves killing three zombies with one sniper rifle shot kind of the same deal here as the shotgun you will randomly get a weapon out of a weapon crate so the minute you get a sniper rifle run around in the circle or if you get a big group of zombies appear in front of you just fire the sniper rifle straight into them generally if it's the smaller or lower class zombies you're going to instantly kill them if there's like kind of three or four in a row the bullet will literally go through the whole bunch of them so just let a group of zombies accumulate and then fire the sniper in again don't waste time just trying to focus on this achievement because you will easily get this during your playthroughs that you'll need to do in order to get all of the achievements in this game. So the next achievement I'm going to focus on is Sweet Tenial. Now this involves collecting 100 Twinkies to celebrate 100 years of Hostess, who are the people that make Twinkies. Now basically these are the health pickups in Zombieland. So as you're playing the game, you take some damage from zombies, just pick up a Twinkie, do that a hundred times and you'll get the achievement. Obviously there's no point just focusing on this 30G achievement. Just keep playing the game. You'll need to go through on two run-throughs and by the time you've done that, you'll probably have this achievement in the bag quite easily. The they're all the same achievement requires you to kill one of every zombie in the game. Now this one's a progressive one, so again don't focus on trying to get this particular achievement, just play through the game's campaign. Now at level 9 you will unlock a side mission for a college. That college mission is actually where you'll find the very last variant of zombie you need to kill to get this achievement. There is a boss zombie who is a coach, basketball coach if you like, um, that you need to kill. Once you kill him, this achievement will very likely pop because you'll pretty much have killed every other type of zombie the game has to offer by then. Direct flight involves travelling from LA to DC in under 5 hours and 45 minutes. Now I actually completed the whole campaign, all 10 levels and the side missions, in around about 3 hours. So I got this achievement really easy. However, I do play a lot of top-down shooters and I'm quite used to this type of format. If you're not as confident, what I would suggest you do is actually play levels 1 to 10 without touching the side missions. You don't have to complete the side missions to get this achievement. You can go straight through from levels 1 to 10 right across the map and that should easily net you this achievement. You should get it done in at least three hours, which will mean you'll get the achievement quite easy. So Road Less Traveled is the next achievement. It's worth 50G, this one, and it's a progressive achievement again. This one, you have to complete all of the side missions in the game, and you cannot do that until you have played level 9 of the game's campaign which will open up that zombie coach level I was talking about earlier. Once you get the zombie coach level completed, you'll get this achievement. Innovation and industry requires you to gain a kill with every environmental hazard in Zombieland Double Tap Road Trip. Now basically on all of the maps you've got cars that can explode, you've got 
gas cylinders or propane cylinders. You have fire hydrants you can turn on that will kill zombies. You also have diggers that you can turn on. They'll spin left and right and stuff and kill zombies that way. You also got things like fairground attractions in the very first level of the game, which is actually the ones that I missed when I played the game first time round. So when you're playing the campaign's very first level, be sure to let zombies build up before you activate each of the fairground rides. If you do that, you'll get kills with each of the rides and it will save you having to go back to the first level like I did. Because I didn't realise at that time that that was an achievement, if you like. So, But if you're missing any, it's most likely those fairground rides that you didn't succeed in killing a zombie with like I did. Burn Baby Burn. So this one is a 20G as well and it requires you to kill six zombies and set yourself on fire with a single Molotov. Now obviously Molotovs can be acquired from the green weapon crates. They are random so it you know, it's all dependent on which level you get and whether they're spawning and stuff. A good way of getting this is probably horde mode because you get a lot more zombies. However, you can do it via the campaign as well. The issue with this is that you cannot throw the Molotov at a group of zombies and then run into it and set yourself alight. You literally have to burn the zombies and yourself at the same time. So the way to do that is to let a group of zombies amass, and I would suggest at least 10 in a group all bundled together and then turn round point blank throw a molotov at that group of zombies and that will set you alight and set them alight and also kill at least six of them you might die doing this i did when i got the achievement so be aware of that definitely don't do it if it's at a critical point in the game because obviously that will be annoying but do it when you're ready to do it and you think you can survive the experience I mean a good place would be next to a Twinkie for instance um, just to save yourself dying during you know playing a level and having to restart and stuff but like I said you do have to do it face on with a group of zombies and set yourself alight at the same time you set the zombies alight so next up is a variety is the spice of life now this achievement requires you to get a kill with every weapon and every throwable in the game so basically as you're playing the game and you're opening car boots or you're opening the weapon crates change weapons as frequently as possible to ensure you get the achievement over time given that you're going to need to play this campaign through twice you should have plenty of time to pin down this achievement if you keep changing weapons on a regular basis fully loaded this achievement is a bit of a tricky one because this game requires four players to get this achievement or at least four controllers now Zombieland Double Tap Road Trip is a local player game only so there's no online support so if you're going to get this achievement you're going to need four controllers minimum you don't need four people and i'll tell you why basically i collect a lot of controllers and stuff if you follow me on instagram so four controllers wasn't an issue for me obviously it probably will be an issue for quite a few people so this might be an achievement a lot of you might not be able to get if you don't have four controllers what I did with my four controllers was I logged myself in, I logged my wife in, and I logged in two guest accounts. And basically, you have to move each of the players on each of the controllers into a particular part of the level so that zombies spawn. Now, I chose level five because it's the shortest level in the game. And basically, individually took a controller, moved the player, took the controller, moved the player, until I got to my own controller. Now, I let the zombies beat the death out of all the other players, because you don't actually need to finish the level with four players to get this achievement. So the key is having four players logged in, getting them to start the game, and getting them into a position in the game where zombies will start running at them. Once they're dead, all you need to do then is actually complete the level solo on your own once you've done that the 50 G's will be yours for fully loaded 
For your consideration is another achievement that requires you to have multiple players in order to acquire it. This one's an 80 point achievement so it's actually well worth the effort. All you need here is actually two controllers and two accounts. So if you log in with a spare account so you've got a player two or an absent player two and then load up horde mode is how I did it and then basically let the player two die and then as player one focus on killing zombies after player two has died and typically what I found was the minute I did like a you know special kill where I blew up a car with lots of zombies next to it and stuff that would normally award me zombie kill of the week every time I did that and basically once you've got your zombie kill of the week medal let yourself die rinse and repeat 12 times that's how I got the achievement. The last of the independent achievements is the just as great as the original achievement. Now this one involves the player surviving 88 minutes in single player horde mode. My advice for doing this is to choose the fairground map horde mode. That's a 25 wave horde mode and will take the longest to do. And the reason I say that is I played through the 25 wave horde mode solo and completed it in less than 40 minutes. What I had to do at that point was basically deliberately take longer in missions and the smartest way to do that is to only do it when you need to kill X number of zombies. Don't try to extend levels where you have to kill zombie spawn locations you'll probably die because they get pretty intense. The missions I chose were obviously the first mission, which involves killing, I think it's 50 zombies, and I've stretched that mission out to 20 minutes. I basically put my phone down on the floor, set the timer, and let it tick on the 20 minutes. The minute it hit 20 minutes, I killed the last zombie, went through the next few levels where you get kind of, you know, survive for two minutes, three minutes, that kind of stuff. And the next time I got a kill X number of zombies mission, which was kill, I think, 175 zombies, I deliberately made that one last 20 minutes as well. You know, reset the timer on the stopwatch, set it off again, kept an eye on until it got to 20 minutes. And then the third zombie X kill mission, which I think was something like 250 or 300, something like that, I deliberately took longer to do that mission as well and stretched that one out to 20 minutes. At that point, I had a guaranteed 60 minute game time plus what I'd already played in between, which left 30 minutes approximate to take to do the rest of the 22 waves within the game, which is adequate. So just by extending three of those zombie X kill missions, I was able to add 60 minutes to the time to complete the horde mode, which obviously with the remaining levels left, I was able to get it done within, I think it was about an hour and 45 I got it done originally. So you could maybe afford to drop some of the level, you know, deliberate level extensions to 15 minutes and get away with it. I went for 20 because I, I just wanted to get it done. I didn't want to have to replay horde mode again. The other key, obviously, to getting the just as great as the original is surviving 25 waves of Horde. And my key tips for doing that is when you play the first six or seven levels, only use the pistol. Do not grab any weapons from the crates. The crates despawn weapons after a time. So there'll become a point where you can't get any more weapons from the crates. So definitely, if you can, survive the first six to seven levels on pistol only. The other important thing to remember is to always use your throwables and your landmines to the best of your ability. Don't use environmentals to kill zombies unless you, you, know, you really need to. If you're setting off the boat ride in the fairground level, you can use your special power, your LBRB, to slow down time so that you can set the fairground ride off into action and that will also kill a few zombies for you and obviously save on valuable bullets as well as help you out a little bit. That's how I got it done, basically utilising my abilities, you know, utilising that LBRB 
RB only when I really needed it or when I was actually setting off an environmental and basically using the pistol for as long as I could at the beginning of the game. So the next group of achievements, Walk in the Park, Wild Juice, Coupon Clipper, Well Done, Road Warrior, 20 to Life, Silver Like a Fox, Buying in Bulk, Taking on the Horde and Casablanca are all relative to completing each level in the game's campaign. They progressively get larger in gamer score as you play through. So for instance, Walk in the Park is 20G, Wild Juice is 25, Coupon Clipper 30 and so on until you get to the very last level 10 mission which is 65G and that's Casablanca. All of those achievements total 425 achievement points just for playing through the campaign. So the final group of achievements are relative to upgrading your characters in Zombieland Double Tap Road Trip. Now what I do suggest for all of the achievements is that you use the same character. I went through using Columbus the whole time and basically by doing that I was able to get Columbus fully maxed out and upgraded after two complete campaign playthroughs that includes the side missions so at minimum in order to get the 10 times the violence 10 times the bullets 10 times the action and the 10 times the blood achievements all worth 25g each so a square 100g in all you have to play through the game's campaign twice with the same character well thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and also that it helps you get your 1000G gamer score on Xbox or your Platinum Trophy on PlayStation 4. If for any reason you feel that I'm missing information in this video or you need a bit more guidance, feel free to drop me a comment in the comment section below the video and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Thanks again for watching, take care, keep well and most importantly, come back soon.